Hello there everyone and welcome to John Drinks and for the past 10 minutes I've been talking to a camera that wasn't switched on about Blabnook 10 because the people that made this camera decided that if the SD card is full rather than have some kind of a mechanism to indicate to the user of the camera that something has happened to the recording like a little beep or a light that flashes or just something subtle that says by the way something's gone wrong you might want to check me it just switches itself off. <sighs> so I've got a dram of whiskey here that I've already talked about. This is Bladnock 10. It's a lowland whiskey. And we're going to talk a little bit about the provenance of the whiskey. We're going to talk a little bit about this. This is Whiskipedia by Charles McLean. And he's got a page on Bladnock. He's got a page on pretty much every whiskey you could possibly want to know about. And I'm not going to read it out exactly, but I'm going to sort of do a Spark Notes version of the history of Bladnock because. It's a tiny bit checkered. Long story short, if you need to get a train or something, I love this whiskey, you should buy it. Let's go into a bit more detail though. So, this is a Lowland whiskey. Lowland whiskies are not exactly what you'd call the most popular whiskies on the planet. Until a couple of years ago, you might have been able to name one or two Lowland whiskies. And chances are they were Ockentoshan and Glenkinchy. They were the two that everybody knew about. Since then there's been a bit of an explosion, like not a massive explosion, but you know, definitely an increase. Bladnock's always been there. It's just one of those ones that's flown under the radar. Rosebank's coming back. Lindor's Abbey's first whiskey should be ready by Christmas. You've got Glasgow as well. They're doing some interesting things with triple distillation. And triple distillation is actually quite a common thing for the region. If you want to do the whole kind of like boxing everyone together in a region thing, triple distillation does happen a fair bit. Glen Goyne used to be a lowland whiskey actually, and they. I don't think it really had anything to do with geography, them changing themselves to Highland. I think it was more the case that Lowlands weren't that popular of a region at the time, so they were like, oh, we're not that guy, we're this other guy, because they were sort of literally dancing on the border anyway, so they were just like, yeah, we're just gonna, we're just gonna go with these guys instead. <laughs> Bye, later. Um, because it, it turns out you can just change your region if you're in that particular kind of a situation. You did have the interesting situation with the Campbelltown region where it was looking like they were going to get wiped off the face of the earth. Um, and then they did a very clever thing where they just made sure they have the same number of distilleries as the lowland region. Uh, because, you know, getting rid of the lowland region off of the whiskey map, they're not going to do that. You know, that would be like a teacher saying that you're going to get an A star and then an algorithm telling you you're a C student. You know, it's never going to happen. So this is Bladnock 10, it's 46.7% ABV, which is a bit of a weird percentage, but we like 46%. 46% is the next best thing to cask strength. It's non-chill filtered, it doesn't mention whether it's coloured or not. I don't believe it is. I've not looked into it, but I don't believe it is. There is a school of thought amongst some other drinks reviewing, whiskey reviewing YouTubers that if it's not on the label, it doesn't mean anything. If I emailed the distillery tomorrow and asked, is that coloured? And they said, no, it's not. I'm happy with that because they've no reason to lie to me. Things not stated on the label, but it is stated on a box or it is stated on a tag. I don't think that's less valid because it's still information concerning how it's made. You know, if they decide to write it all in little writing on the lid, does that mean that it's no longer valid because you might be able to lose the lid? It doesn't make any sense to me, and I think people that say if it's not a label, it's not a real thing, kind of need to get over themselves a little bit. Personal opinion. I'm in love with this stuff. It's, it's fantastic, and it's kind of cemented in my head. I'm a big fan of Lowland whiskies. I've tried a couple now. I tried the Ockentoshan 21, which there'll be a video somewhere, and I tried the Lindor's Abbey. There'll also be a video. Um, and now I've tried the Bladnook, and each time it's knocking it out of the park. I don't like boxing whiskies together with the whole kind of like, oh, this is from this region, therefore it has X, Y, and Z flavor components, and they're all made the same way, and they all taste similar, and they all have these characteristics, because it is kind of bollocks. Loads of distilleries now experiment, and they do their own little thing. You can get petered highlands, you can get unpetered islands, you know, the sky's the limit. There's no rhyme, reason, or rule for how regions do whiskies anymore, because, it's not a necessity anymore. I should quickly talk about the whiskey. So, neat, it's a vanilla bomb. I left this in the glass for about 15 minutes and it is like somebody tried to drown me in vanilla ice cream. There's a little bit of lemon and some floral components in the back, but honestly, it's vanilla, vanilla, and more fucking vanilla. And also, we've talked in the Johnny Walker videos about there being a burn. Those are all 40% and they've all been fiddled with whiskies. 
this is stronger and it doesn't have that burn. It's, as I've said before, more of an indication of how well or how badly a whiskey is made. This doesn't have it because it's a better made product. There's more care, thought and attention put into how the whiskey is put out rather than bottle any old shit and slap the label on it and people will buy it regardless. If you've not watched the Johnny Walkers, you can do, but that's sort of an overview. They go from bad to at best mediocre and way overpriced as a summary. With water, there's more of a sourdough note. I've had to leave this to air for a little while, so that could be contributing to this because of, you know, camera problems, but there is definitely like a, a sour, yeasty component to it. Still plenty of the vanilla coming through, but there's more kind of like a, sort of like a burnt butter kind of an element in there as well. And the flavor's still alarmingly rich. It's beautiful. It really is. I'm, I, oh, it's so good. It's vanilla, it's cornflakes, it's buttered toast, it's milky tea with sugar in it. That's what it is. It's something really comforting and rich and sweet. A little bit tannic in there as well. Yeah, there's loads of just various dairy components. Um, a little bit of like Jersey, Jersey cream, like gold top milk in there as well. Tiny bit of like a caramel component as well, but it's so incredibly approachable and yet at the same time has so much complexity to it. It's a box ticker whiskey because you could give that to somebody as somebody who's like, I don't know if I like whiskey. You'd be like, we'll try this. This is a pretty good introduction. And you can also give it to someone who's a seasoned whiskey drinker because they'll get something from it each time. It, it's quite schizophrenic. It keeps changing. There's more flavor components that come through, but they're all quite rich and luxurious and disarming. You can tell from the fill level on this bottle I've been adoring this whiskey. Um, I think it's fantastic. There is something I do need to quickly note about. Um, it's not cheap. You can get this for around 55 to 60 pounds. The Bladnock website sells this for 60 pounds, and I don't know why. Because retailers are all selling it for less. Sure, they're charging delivery on top of that as well, but it doesn't reflect well on Bladnock that they're charging more for their own product than second-hand retailers are. I think given Bladnock's history, which we'll go into in a second, assuming the battery doesn't cut out or something, they need to be doing everything they can to make this whiskey approachable. They're going down the sort of the boutique excellent product route, and I'm glad that they have because it is a fucking stunning whiskey. And there's a point that's been made on a couple of videos that I've watched about you can get other 10 year olds, you can get other 14 year olds for less money, and that's true. But a lot of those whiskies are owned by massive, massive, massive companies. They're able to offer their product cheaper because they're more successful businesses for a, quite a cruel way of putting it, but for a want of a way of putting it, they've got a larger net to cast. They can offer their products for cheaper because they have a larger sphere of influence. That's just how business works. This, however, does justify the price. I will buy another bottle of this, or I might delve into, they've recently released a 14 year old and I'm tempted. I'm tempted by a fair few of theirs now because this has been a fantastic poster boy for the distillery. And it's definitely on on the to visit list. You can visit them. They, they do do tours. I've heard they're quite good. Uh, a quick note about the bottle as well. I love the shape of this bottle. It's very different. It's a big old dumpy decanter. You could keep this because, I mean, joking aside, you could kill someone with this bottle. It is a chonky boy, man. That's the Bladnick 10. I'd give it... I'd give it a 4.5 because I still haven't come across anything that's a full-blown 5 yet, but it's... I'm not gonna lie, it's not far off. If maybe this was cash strength, I don't know, we might be there, to be honest, but as it is, there are some qualms with it. Maybe that it's a little bit too simplistic of a flavor profile sometimes, but do you know what? It's nice, so who gives a shit? And it's well made, and there's care and thought and attention put into it, so I don't mind. Quickly go over the history of the distillery, but if you just came for the review of the whiskey, then thank you very much for joining me, and do join me next time where I'll be drinking something else. And before you leave, if also you want to check out some links down below, there's links to Facebook and Instagram, and also my Patreon account. I'm very grateful to all my patrons, and their names will be scrolling at the end of the video, as with all of them. You can support the channel from a pound. You start getting sort of goodies from three pounds. Um, it's entirely up to you. I'm not going to beg and force you, but if you feel like you want to contribute financially, 
all the love in the world. Thank you very much. Now over to the history of this as well. When I read up about this distillery, it definitely helped because I love an underdog. I really do. Um, so there's a full two-page spread here about Bladnock. Um, I'll, I'll sort of try and do the Spark Notes version. Um, but basically, it was established as a farm distillery by brothers Thomas and John McClend in 1817. Operated until 1905. Then it was bought out by Dunville and Company. Um, and between 1911 and 1937, when the company liquidated, they only produced whiskey intermittently. They were then sold off to Ross and Coulter of Glasgow, who dismantled it in 1941 and stole the stock at below its value. The distillery buildings went to A.B. Grant, trading as Bladnock Distillery Company, installed two new stills in 1956 and then sold it on again. It was owned by Inver House until 1983 and then it was sold again to Arthur Bell & Son. Uh, they merged with Guinness and then United Distilleries in 1987. Um, they reduced the capacity in 86 and then it was decommissioned completely in 1993. Uh, and it was managed as a heritage center from that point onwards, basically. Uh, it was bought again in 94 with the original plan being to turn it into holiday cottages. But when it was seen sort of the, the importance that Bladnock had with both the local economy and just as a whiskey distillery as a whole, it was brought back online in 2000, but it only lasted for nine years until it went under again. Um, they went into voluntary liquidation in 2014, and then it was bought again in 2015, five years ago, by an Australian yogurt entrepreneur, by the looks of it. His plans are to increase the capacity to 1 million litres, and he's also brought aboard Ian McMillan, who's big in the whiskey circle, for want of a better way of putting it. Um, so that's sort of a, a condensed history. And basically, it's been the hot potato of the whiskey world. There are some distilleries that have had worse luck than that. Um, many of them are no longer with us. It's had a few near misses, this distillery, and judging from the character of the whiskey that we've got here, I really hope we don't see a repeat of it again, which is part of the reason why I'm kind of wanting to sing its praises. I hope more people get to know this whiskey because it is fantastic stuff. Um, and I am keen to try more of their portfolio. I do think they need to have a quick word to themselves about how they're pricing it, just in terms of, you know, how they're pricing it themselves versus how it looks to other people, because that, it reads as a bit of a rip-off, even if there might necessarily be a reason for it, it does read as a bit of a rip-off, so take care there, Bladnook, if you, for whatever reason, are watching this. But that aside, fantastic product. Yeah, it's a little bit expensive, but I mean, we're lucky that they're still with us, to be fair. And £55 for a whiskey that we nearly lost and is of a fantastic calibre? Can't argue with that, to be honest. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Do let me know down below, have you tried any Lowland whiskies? What do you think of them? Have you tried the Bladnock? Did you enjoy it? Uh, thumb the video if you enjoyed this, and if you've come across this by accident, um, consider subscribing if you liked what you saw. For now, though, I will say thank you for joining us, and do join me next time where I'll be drinking something else.